a host of 10 Questions with Kyle Brandt, the podcast on Spotify and The Ringer. His guest is Steve Smith Sr. this week. That's fun. Uh, I imagine you iced up for that one, Kyle, correct? You have to. You have to ice <laughs> up when Steve's coming on. And I asked Steve, I said, can we get into, never mind the origin story of Ice Up Son. I know it has to do with the Keeb to leave and the Patriots. What is the legacy now? Yes. And he said it's that thing that people yell at him on the streets as they're driving by in a cab. They, they want their autograph to be signed Ice Up Son by Steve Smith. And yeah. I said, do they just constantly come up to you and say it? And he says, yes, but I never say it anymore. And I said, Steve, love it with me. You don't say it. When you're, you know, you need, you're at the, the restaurants and right. you want a little more ice in your water, you don't say it to the waiter to get a rise out of him and say, ice up, son. He says, no, never. I said, Steve, I, I don't believe you. When you go into the, the training room after workout, you don't say ice up, son, when you get in the bath. He swears no, but he smiled. I think he does. Okay, so then deep down, uh, does he, though, give the people what they want uh, with the autograph? Does he do that? Because, as you know, Steve Smith does not suffer gladly. On occasion. No, no. We went into a long conversation, Rich, uh, about sometimes those people want the autograph at the restaurant at your table when you're there with your wife. Forget even it. When it's Valentine's Day, and there there is nothing <laughs> written on that autograph close to ice uh, ice up. Son. It's probably more close to two words and seven letters. If you know Steve, he doesn't suffer fool. He does not. Uh, that'll be. That's a great conversation for everybody to take in. Uh, Kyle, uh, along with Steve Smith. Uh, on that uh, that uh, pod that drops today, every yeah. single Wednesday, ten questions with with Kyle Brandt, the Ringer, and Spotify. Let's get into uh, let's get into the conversation of week let's three. The storyline through two weeks would be what writ large, sir. What are you talking about the most? What do you think is the biggest storyline so far through two weeks? Well, it's it's we're going into this Monday night, of Rich, and it's it's like the, the the things and dreams are made of. We 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 have Chiefs Ravens already, and. You know, we had uh, we had the great Dan Hansis from the Around the NFL podcast who does the, the power rankings every week for NFL.com. Yes. And I said, have we ever, ever had a Monday night matchup or even Sunday night, Thursday night, a primetime matchup between the one and the two in, in your power rankings? Because that's where they are, Chiefs and Ravens, one and two. He said, not that I can remember. Um, incidentally, Rich, in his 31 and 32 spots on the power rankings, were both the Jets and the Giants, which is also a first in the history of those NFL.com rankings. So there's your two storylines, I guess, both the, the yin and yang, the, the smiling and the crying theater masks, were the New York all the way at the bottom times two, and then the Chiefs and Ravens are just going to decide to run this back, I guess, and Mahomes and Lamar are continue to take over the league. So then I guess what, which is the best NFC team, do you think? What do you what do you think uh, is emerging on that front? Because even the Saints knocking the Bucks down a peg, or or at least showing us that it's going to take yeah. some time for Brady to materialize. Um, it, it, the, the Saints have questions like Drew Brees yeah. is now shot. Like the there's no Cincinnati for them to move on to. Certainly when it's Aaron Rodgers coming in, um, but uh, you know there there have been some bright spots. You could even make a case for the Arizona Cardinals. Would you? The Arizona Cardinals are great. I, I, when when it's prediction week and everyone picks their division winners and wild cards, I, I turned heads, which I wasn't trying to do by predicting that the Los Angeles Rams are going to win the NFC West. And everybody freaked out as if I made some outlandish pick that the Jaguars are going to win the Super Bowl. No, I think the Rams are going to win the West. I still think it's the best division. Somehow it's happened, Rich, and only one off year, the Sean McVay thing became yesterday's news. We're, it, we're, never mind Cincinnati. We're on to Kingsbury. We're, we're, on to, we're on to Shanahan. The guy who took over the league in about two years and was the greatest coach we'd ever seen at the youngest age was, oh, no, he's done. He doesn't have Todd Gurley anymore. He doesn't need Todd Gurley. His best two, the best two players on the whole team are on defense, and they're probably two of the top 10 to 15 players in the whole league, and they've come out with two great wins right now. I don't know if anybody in, in America could name one of their running backs or one of their receivers, maybe only because his name is Cooper Cup and it's a great name, but they don't have an MVP candidate. They don't have an Offensive Player of the Year candidate, but I still think they have one of the best coaches in the league. I love the Rams. Obviously, I love the Packers, and this has been absolutely wild, Rich, because if you buy into it, you and I have talked many times about the Aaron Rodgers uh, farewell tour, revenge tour, middle finger tour, whatever you want to call it, it has been a glorious shock and awe display from the two of them. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's with, with great malice, with great pain, he has, dis he has distributed to these two teams, and, and they look like one of the best teams in football. And that Sunday night game on NBC with Drew Brees yep. and the Saints uh, coming off of that Monday night loss and then the conversation 
uh, by Sunday. Honestly, it'll be amazing if if Drew Brees can even crawl. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like his his he should come out wearing depends based on the yeah. conversation that's being had about him right now. And I I would not go there yesterday. I won't go there. It, it seemed like he just took what was in front of him. And even a goat uh, who's got every damn passing record is going to take a while. Uh, without the guy who he looks for pretty much on every snap not being there. That's the way I'm looking at Drew Brees right and, now. And look at it this way, too. It, it was it was easily, Rich, one of the worst games ever played by a quarterback who threw for over 300 yards, one <laughs> touchdown, one pick, and was losing the Offensive Player of the Year and almost won on the road. One of the worst games ever. What What is this storyline? Is it one of these things where people – just want it so bad they want Drew Brees to be hashtag washed that they're just deciding that it's happened because he threw one bad pick. The pick he threw in that game had nothing to do with arm strength or uh, uh, virility or age. He just made a bad pick. It was a bad read. He's done it a million times. He'll do it more. It's fine. I, I, I'm not there, and I take it personally because I went and Googled this after that Raiders game when I started hearing everybody saying Drew Brees is done. Drew Brees is exactly, exactly nine days older than me. January of 1979. So I take it very personally when someone says that he is too old and cannot do his job anymore. I, personally, I, I, I have a cacophony of moans and groans just to tie my shoes right now. Yes. I'm getting old. So the fact that Drew Brees is even out there hucking it around and nearly beating the Raiders, don't come and tell me he's washed. That means I'm washed. And by the way, Kyle Brandt, perfect timing for you to talk about your age and feeling older potentially okay. than your actual age for the cacophony that you mentioned to be going on in the background. Who's that? Which Brandt am I hearing in the background during okay. this conversation? I'm glad here? you heard that. I'm, I'm sure he is too. That's young six-year-old Calvin Brandt who okay. is in the next room on his laptop doing uh, home learning. <laughs> which, uh, that's, you can hear, that's the American educational system you can hear in the next room. <laughs> Sounds like everything's in order. Uh, on yeah, oh, no, it's great. It's, we're all buckled down, and he's in there learning what five plus four is. And if you take away three apples from the nine apples, how yep. many apples are left? And uh, that's what we're doing here in September 23rd, 2020. That's great. I'm talking to you about Drew Brees getting old. Right. And Calvin Brandt is probably uh, opening other tabs he's not supposed to open. Exactly. And look, yeah, because two four-year-olds walking in as I'm talking to a hey, national radio and television fantastic. Uh, good afternoon, football. <laughs> Right there. <laughs> Good night football uh, with Kyle yeah, Brent. In, in the evening on NFL Network, it's uh, total <laughs> access. Here at the Brent home this afternoon, it's uh, total access, That's as it. always. Hey, now, everybody. Show. Kyle Brent. Kyle Brent. Uh, <laughs> Then, then let's just return a little bit of football, and then we'll, okay, we'll, we'll gaze at our pop culture questions that we've gotten uh, all teed up for you. Um, so the, the slim margin between being 2-0 and 0-2, and the Chicago Bears are the personification of it, clearly. If DeAndre Swift clutches that ball at the end of oh uh, week one, or Daniel Jones gets a defensive pass interference instead of an offensive pass interference, or finds someone in the end zone, the Bears could be 0-2, and, and with Cam performing the way that he would be, uh, looking at so far for New England, I think, uh, would create a huge uh, you-know-what storm uh, based on the conversation I had with you uh, back in the spring where I thought Cam would be perfect for Chicago. I understand mm -hmm. that that might wipe out the whole Trubisky uh, experiment that they still are putting all of their eggs into that basket. But wouldn't Cam be perfect in Chicago right now? That would be a much better 2-0, and I think, if that Cam showed up in Chicago. Don't you think, Kyle? Yeah. I, I do. I, I mean, I do, Rich. And you, Trubisky's been pretty good. I mean, he's he's been good, Mitch. Um, you know, they they say that uh, Maserati Mitch is when he's he's got it going well. But I have discovered the alias I call Miata Mitch, uh, which is a wildly different <laughs> Mitch and doesn't work as well. But we've had mostly Maserati, and yet Cam is still just a completely different piece of of horsepower. And I I will never really know until years from now maybe what exactly the Bears did in the offseason and who they did or did not pursue. We know there were whisperings that Nagy's quickly shuttled about that they were interested in Brady and they tried to get Brady. I, I, it could be the exact same thing for Cam, and it didn't work out. I don't know. But you asked me a couple of questions ago, what's been the biggest story of the NFL? And we talked about the teams at the top and the bottom. Cam has looked awesome. No doubt. And I, I just awesome. And week one is fine. You, you had a, a running game plan against the Dolphins, and he looked like he was pretty strong and healthy, and that was great. It was being down two scores to Russell Wilson in the second half and just chucking it and chucking it to Julian Edelman for 170 yards and Nikhil Harry coming out of the, the clouds out of nowhere and he's basically doing it with the same guys Brady wasn't doing it with last year. So Cam is very scary. I, I'm, I'm annoyed by it if I'm a Bears fan. And I got to say, as good as they look, I'm a little scared by it as a Bills fan, too. 
You know what, man? Um, it, it, if if New England gets off the mat in the manner in which we're seeing them, and by off yeah. the mat, I mean they looked like that they were going to go into their Tom Brady, post-Tom Brady world with Jared Stidham at quarterback, and instead the 2015 Cam shows up in 2020 in New England, then any other team that had a shot at Cam and just let him sit at home until Belichick could ring the phone up um, has nobody but themselves to blame, especially if Belichick, uh, when he dialed up uh, Cam Newton, looked like he did on today's Zoom. Did that uh, did that piece of gloriousness occur during the window of Good Morning Football, or is that something you're going to hit tomorrow? No, it didn't, but the, it's, a, it's a piece of gloriousness, a threadbare piece. It, Bill Belichick, <laughs> it's, it's, we, the, his clothes, I, we've been talking about for 25 years, but yes. today's look, even by yes. his standards, yes. normally it looks like he dresses out of the hamper. Today he was dressed like a hostage, hostage chic, I call it. He, it was, yes. that, that person wearing that shirt is holding up today's newspaper and saying they're treating us okay and giving us plenty of food. <laughs> and I just, you have to respect it. A lot of people claim they don't care what people think of them. Yes. They don't care what they that is not caring. That is a zero out of a trillion yes. level of caring what you look like. Good Lord. What? That thing, it said, I think it said a built in, it established in 1920, and it's, it's referring to the Patriots. It's right. I think it's referring to the garment itself. Hey, that's the line I used earlier. Same that's job. why we're, we're two peas in the pod. It looks like Flintstone, Bill, is really what it looks like to me. <laughs> you know, it, 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 really, it really is like Bill, I think, got to the Zoom by using his feet uh, under the floor of the car to get there is what it looked like to me. You know, but it also is we we discussed it earlier that this is the goal in life is to is to have such a, a good job and be so damn good at it that you could show up to work like that and nobody will say a word to you. Nobody. True. Rich, nobody. Our, our mutual friend Paul Rudd once, I asked yes. him recently, I said, Why aren't you on Twitter? Everybody's on Twitter. Every one of your Avengers co stars is on there. Every you have the movie star, what you're not you're not on there? And he goes, Listen, man, at this point in life, just tell me where to stand. That's all I can. Just tell me where to stand. I just want to do the job and go home. I'm mm -hmm. not. Just tell me where to stand. I think Belichick is at that. Just tell me where to stand and look. And I, I aspire <laughs> yes. to get there one day. Me too. A uh, few minutes left with <laughs> Kyle Brandt. Ten questions with Kyle Brandt. Paul Rudd was a guest on it. You should check it out. Spotify and Ringer. Steve Smith Sr. is the latest guest dropping today. All right. Ask uh, the poll question of, uh, of Kyle Brandt, if you don't mind. All right, Chris Kyle, Brockman. I'm sure you're aware of this, but two great movies were released on this day in separate years. 1994, Shawshank Redemption. 2000, Remember the Titans. What's the more rewatchable movie? I, I, I always remember the Titans. Um, I, I, I do, and I love the movie, and I love a, a young uh, Hayden Panettiere just uh, chewing up scenery uh, as, as one of the daughters and, and Denzel, of course. However, there is no scene in which the players on the football team or the coaching staff sit there drinking icy cold bohemian style beer like free men who could be tarring the roof of one of their own house. There is never a moment where Denzel says, as for Andy. He spent that break honking in the shade, sort of a strange little smile on his face, watching us drink his beer. Some did think he did it to curry favor with the gods or to make a few friends among us cons. Me, I believe he did it just to feel normal again, if only for a short while. <laughs> It's Shawshank and a runaway. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is a really great impressive. response. And Lord also Freeman. proof that you have rewatched that wow. movie a lot. That was impressive. Over and over. <laughs> So then ask him the breakout question, Chris. This is a breakout question we have not asked yet. We're going to post on, on, our, uh, on our Twitter feed. We've uh, only unpacked it just moments ago. Uh, we did this, cooked this up just for you, Kyle Brent. Yes, go, so we're going to throw this out there, too. What's the best Stephen King adaptation into a movie? Shawshank Redemption, Misery, The Shining, Stand yep. By Me. Okay. Um, my senior thesis in college was about uh, how to make movies from books, and one of the principal uh, texts was The Shining. So this is, Princeton, this is Princeton by born? Kubrick and the book by King, of course. And at the end, people don't know in the book, yeah. there, is no, there is no hedge maze in the book, and the Overlook Hotel actually explodes at the end of the movie in the book. It's wildly different, and Stephen King did not like the movie. So listen, all the money is on The Shining for me. However, mm. however that's probably the best movie. My favorite, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm sitting there, Schwarzenegger and Richard Dawson just shooting looks back across the stage. Running who Man. Who loves you and who do you love? I love The Running Man. It's a guilty Same. pleasure that I'm totally proud of. No. The best is The Shining. My favorite is Mad Dog Ben Richards in The Running Man.
Okay, so let's unpack this uh, one by one. I definitely agree. Uh, yeah. Your your answer not only goes by yeah. gut and feel, but through the uh, academic world of Princeton. What did you receive on that paper that you wrote on? A minus. Okay. And the worst part is, Rich, the only reason I got A minus is I, I didn't proofread and I had typos and stuff like that. Oh, <laughs> wow. Job. Even Princeton men <laughs> do not proofread. How about that? Okay, now then, the word adaptation is yeah. is in the eye of the beholder i mean who who better than i mean you want to talk about going toe to toe of my vision my vision stephen king versus stanley kubrick is yeah. definitely sort of the heavyweight fight that you want right. and um i i know stephen king might not have liked the adaptation but that is kubrick's version of stephen king i mean how do mm -hmm. you how do you not give that the winner just because it's kubrick adapting it and the way he did adapt it that that's the winner to me it's really good it, it, it's and, and apparently the scene when jack is going after shelly and she's got the bat and trying to hit him apparently rich kubrick did like like 76 takes of that scene <laughs> to the point where the actors were having actual mental breakdowns and i think on take 76 they finally got it from what i've read King, uh, not terribly welcome on the set, was going to visit, and Kubrick not really interested in it. King also not interested. I think there was acrimony. So I think that also ended up in the script and the movie. I love it. I absolutely love it. But, Rich, yes. don't tell me you don't have a soft spot for the running man. Oh, and all of excuse me, Kyle. I know Kyle, you do. Kyle, this is how uh, soft <laughs> my spot is for the running man. <laughs> the pleasure is not guilty. It's guilty as charged pleasure. I, I, don't, I, I, I am un, unabashed lover of that film because part of me not only loves Schwarzenegger movies but yep. part of me also what was I born to give away on the planet Chris Brockman cash and prizes uh, so the fact that Richard Dawson is a protagonist in this mm -hmm. film giving away at one point home versions of the running man <laughs> to fans in the audience of a game show turned uh, dystopian is to me with Jim Brown, and I do believe he was still Jesse the Body Ventura prior to oh, him yeah. being Governor the Mind Ventura. And three words at the time of my life that I will never forget, Maria Conchita Alonzo. Hello. <laughs> That's it. Rip the knob off whenever the running man is on, Kyle. How does that Fantastic. for an answer? It's Maria Conchita Alonzo in the role of Miss Amber Valdez, and it's Jesse the Body Ventura asking the questions, are you ready for pain? Are you ready for suffering? If the answer is yes, then you're ready for Captain Freedom's workout. And boy, was I ready. Oh, my gosh. It's the best. I love that movie. I'll be back. Only in a rerun. Only in a rerun. <laughs> <laughs> Whitman, Price, and Haddad. That's right. <laughs> You remember them? Basking in the Maui sun. Whitman, Price, and Haddad. <laughs> oh, my Great gosh. Movie. Kyle, my fantasy team name one year was Whitman Price and Haddad. I'm was not it really? I'm not into it. <laughs> how did they? How did Whitman Price and Haddad finish, Kyle? How did they finish? Oh yeah, I think we took uh, Dominic Davis in the first round on the Texans, and it ended it just like the real Whitman Price and Haddad, <laughs> so, so, not so, asking nice. in the fantasy sun. I think it ended. I think it ended horribly. <laughs> Respect to Yafet Koto, wherever he may be right That's now. That's right. How I, do we I, even? I Price how do we not even mention Yafet Koto, the future uh, Alonzo Mosley FBI of my favorite comedy? Yes. Thank you for the call, Kyle. As always, uh, just a, a, a pure joy. Thank you. Let's chat again next week. Remember, all work, no play, make Rich a dull boy. That's right. Too many takes makes Jack very angry. That's it right there. Kyle Thanks, Brandt. Man. Kyle Brandt, everybody. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.